Hello, I'm Eric Rabel, site editor and writer for DocWire News, and uh, returning with me today is Dr. Pyle Coley, cardiology section advisor for DocWire News and a cardiologist practicing at Cherry Creek Heart in Denver, Colorado. Dr. Coley will be leading a discussion today with Dr. Valentina Puntman, who is deputy head of department and senior clinical investigator at the Institute for Experimental and Translational Cardiovascular Imaging at Goethe University Hospital in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, and the conversation uh, will focus on the late July cardiology uh, paper in JAMA Cardiology um, that looks at cardiovascular MRI outcomes in a large population of unselected patients who have recovered from COVID-19. Uh, and with that, I will hand the floor to Dr. Coley to lead the discussion. Thank you. Dr. Putman, thank you so much for joining me today. I have been so looking forward to talking with you because your study has not only made a splash in the medical community, but also in the popular media and the press and really made some impactful changes in the way that here in America, our culture goes, such as with the Big Ten being canceled. So I want to start just by asking you, tell me a little bit about the background. What led you to ask this clinical question about the COVID-19 virus and how did you decide to design this study? Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to be able to talk about this as well. It's, um, it's really an honor. So uh, just about the study. So we were slightly primed, not about the, the virus, but about the myocardial inflammation. We've been doing research with cardiac MRI in myocardial inflammation for quite a while. And obviously this virus, this uh, pandemic has taken us all by surprise. And obviously at the beginning, we were all focused on lung issues. And then the cytokine, cytokine storm, the autoimmune uh, reactions came a little bit more to the front. And that is what actually triggered in us. Maybe there is actually also cardiac involvement. It was just so new. It was just so acute. We, we were still coming to terms with acute COVID illness. And uh, obviously the heart was nowhere near the, the, the front focus. So that started us to think, how would we get near to the patients to learn because it was also new. We simply wanted to learn. And we tried to, to be fast, to be, to, be, to be also fast there at, at the beginning of the disease. And that, that proved itself to be incredibly difficult. Patients were obviously very, very ill. They were in intensive care. They were, they, it was difficult to bring them to the scanner. It was also, at that time, patients were infective. So the staff was really worried about themselves getting infected. So we gave up on it, to be very honest, to, to be able to scan patients in acute phase. It just turned out to be too complex, too complicated for, for, for everyone. That's how we then resolved to, okay, let's just chill out. Let's try to see patients a little bit down the line when they are already a little bit better and they can come to us. We, can in, we will invite them, um, invite them in an unselected way. Whoever had a positive test, recovered, please come and have a scan with us. And this is how the whole story started. So we had a huge response from the patients. So we engaged the COVID-19 testing center and this is where we put our flyers and patients then got in touch with us and they were all, they actually all felt maybe I'm going to have a little bit of a free cardiac scan, free cardiac checkup. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, we did not give them always the very good news. <laughs> so um, the outcomes were like this. So we, we, started, we started seeing quite a few things. And to begin with, we said, we're just not going to think about it. We're really not going to make any thoughts till we have at least 100 patients. But obviously we did have quite a huge experience in other myocarditis syndromes, viral myocarditis, lupus myocarditis. So we knew what we were looking at. We knew the patterns from other conditions. So uh, this was just impossible to ignore. In sort of a rough sense, what we found, there is a very small group of patients. So the, the patients that we included in, in this first publication, hundreds of them, the average time from their COVID test, positive COVID test to the CMR, so having had a scan, was around 70 days. So three, two, three months down the line uh, on average. And um, they, a, a small group had no changes whatsoever. A very small group had tremendous changes, so really uh, aggressive myocarditis. And then there was a big group in between that had changes 
but perhaps not necessarily so aggressive, but still we couldn't dismiss the presence of inflammation. So 78% had something and 60% of them had active inflammation. So that was inflammation within the heart muscle and also inflammation of the lining of the heart. Some of them also had already the presence of the scar, which, was, which could be attributed to this recent event. So we, we, the, the major reason why we also give them the contrast agent is that we can do the scar imaging so that we can also, so to speak, see their history. So if they had any previous conditions that maybe even they didn't know about. So that is a little bit as in how we got there and uh, how we then ended up with, the, with these with this findings. Well, I mean, I want to point out a couple of comments on something you said that really struck a chord with me. Yes. The first is the journey of, this, of science, how yes. you would think about clinical questions and how we design these clinical studies. And, and in a way, you started out asking about inflammation during the acute episode. But yes. what's even more informative in a way is what's now happened, as you said, 70 days later, or yes. what's continuing to happen. The other thing that struck me from your study is that it really seemed independent of the clinical presentation in some ways. Yes. So inflammation didn't always correlate with the symptoms that the person was having, which was really a curveball if you think about it, because we often tend to correlate myocarditis with the classic symptoms of chest pain or heart failure type symptoms or other such symptoms. So to me, that was very very surprising finding as well. So I want you to comment a little bit on what your takeaways are in terms of the clinical significance. How have you changed your practice based on this study? Or do you feel like the sample size is too small and additional information is necessary? Certainly there are people out there that are saying cardiac MRI is such a sensitive tool. We're looking too closely. We ought to give it more time. So how would you, um, you know, address those types of comments? To be honest with you, we are at the beginning of this road, so it's very difficult to, to say anything in a, in a very de definitive way. We just need to learn, and this is also what I'm saying to the patients themselves, because I prep them to what can come out, so they do know and they, and they can anticipate a little bit uh, also their findings, especially now when the, the paper has been out there so widely publicized, they all know that, um, that something can come up. Um, and in principle, I'm going, let's just keep cool and let's just see you again in six months time because this is, the, this is uh, our, our protocol. So we followed them up to really confirm that this persistence of inflammation is still there six months down the line. So another and MRI at six months? Exactly. We, at the second time, at the second MRI, we do not give any contrast agent anymore. We are just simply following the inflammation markers. So we want to learn the dynamics of myocardial inflammation in the heart. So at the moment, we are simply just learning. Now, there are obviously certain patients, a small group, that have quite a significant impairment of LV function as well. So this gives us also a little bit of a... Uh, excuse, so to say, that we can also treat them with heart failure medication because this is something that is already guideline approved and guideline compliant and we can, we can borrow that. <laughs> that. Otherwise, we actually do not have any good treatments when it comes to myocarditis. We are actually without a proper diagnostic tool as well as proper treatment pathway. And this is a little bit of a tragedy and perhaps my own motivation to really dig into this research of uh, cardiac inflammation because we have to change practice. It is a combination of a lot of things that biopsy remains a uh, gold standard for diagnosis of, of, of cardiac inflammation. And to do biopsy in just everyone with, with, with even perhaps slight symptoms, it's just impossible. And what happens as a result is that patients develop tremendous heart failure. So after years of some non-specific symptoms, and then we do biopsy when they are actually very much down the line. And this is really perhaps too late. So our take of this study was we are actually doing the right thing, going in so early and learning the process, because this is going to give us much more information also how to handle the whole thing. There were comments, people came, why, why that we are, we, are, we, are trying, we, are, we are panicking people out. I know, I know, I'm sorry about it. I really am sorry about it. Why don't we then scan also patients after the flu? 
And I go, yes, actually, indeed, we should, because we need to learn that process there as well. So actually, we just simply need to learn. I mean, I'm not saying that this myocardial inflammation that we have found in COVID is permanent, not at all. But there will be a certain group of patients that will not be able to clear this inflammation and will develop heart failure. And actually, by screening them prospectively, we can give them a chance. We can, we can catch them in time and then offer them treatment in time so that they perhaps we even prevent the development of heart failure. So these are my thoughts. I'm not saying that uh, this is something that is implementable at this, time, uh, at this point in time, but uh, just to, to, to put it a little bit into perspective. No, you made some great points, actually. And I just the other day, in the office had a patient who had COVID-19 still having symptoms. So I did order a cardiac MRI. But okay. I think your study raises the provocative question of whether or not we should be getting these in more people, more cardiac MRIs. Um, and I also really want to highlight the point you made about the flu virus. So is there, and I'm going to ask you to speculate a little bit here, but is there something that you feel is different about the effect of this virus on the heart as compared to the flu or other types of viruses that can cause viral myocarditis? Was there anything in the pattern or on MRI that particularly stood out for you? It's a good question. It's very early to say anything because we know so little about the pathophysiology. We obviously, I've just actually come off the webinar uh, within our DITZ Krakow, so the German Heart Foundation uh, researchers that are all very actively trying to understand the, what is actually happening. Is it the virus infecting the heart? Is it, is it the virus infecting the vessels? Where, what exactly is the problem? What is the starting point of this whole thing? And so, for instance, one of our colleagues from uh, Hamburg Berlin um, uh, coalition <laughs> that are very much into biopsy histological evidence. So they've also published in the same um, in the same edition of JMA Cardiology mm -hmm. the study of uh, histological findings in patients that unfortunately died, autopsy findings, which were very surprisingly coming with very little, a low prevalence of viral infiltration as a viral infection in the in the muscle so it is very difficult to actually understand this infection connection with inflammation and what i what i think and this is really speculation at this point is that virus triggers damage of the heart of a heart muscle it exposes myocardial proteins which is one of the mechanisms that is proposed to be the trigger of autoimmune myocarditis, irrespective of whether this is virus or maybe it is chemotherapy that causes it or other issues. So in principle, we have a little bit of a common pathway of how this cardiac inflammation actually comes about. about. And it's, it's a hypothesis. We haven't got the clue if this is true, but seeing inflammation and following it up confidently is already quite something especially if we can do this non-invasively. And that's why obviously cardiac MRI is a great tool. And I'm not saying that uh, we should all do cardiac MRI. I think what we need to do is do it properly and offer it to the patients because in the end, we are there to serve patients. We are not there just to do fantastic images. <laughs> this is not the point. We need to actually turn our actions, our imaging into guiding therapy. And uh, this is obviously the next step that we need to do.